Hello, it's time to make lasers. So we're going to make a laser to blow up the ship. Now we already have the ship exploding from a PRA set up earlier, but I'm going to hit this with a laser to make it explode. This is Dr. Kevin Kirk. Welcome to 3dtopic.com. Here's how we're going to do it. First we'll make a laser. I'm going to start off from a side view over here. I'll create in my standard primitives just a cylinder. Just a small cylinder. Drag it out. Let's see, I think on this side. And then position it. I want it hitting the ship. I'll start in frame zero. And I want to rotate this a little bit so it's not at such a boring angle. I think I'll take it over there and make it something like this. That looks good. Hopefully this will be a nice dramatic effect. Having the laser hit like that. And then the ship's going to blow up. Now the trouble of course with the cylinder is that it's visible the whole time. So we have to change that. The way to change that is in the object properties. So with the cylinder still selected, I can actually just select it like that, I can go into Edit, Object Properties. Now I want to have the keyframes set up. So I'll do an Auto Key, and I'm going to set it up for frame 0. Edit, Object Properties. I'll set the visibility down to 0. So I key it, and you can see the visibility here is 0. If I render it, quick F9, there is no laser. The laser is going to hit and blow the ship up fairly soon. Around frame 10, frame 11, it starts to shatter. So about frame 9, I'm going to hit the ship with a laser. So on frame 8, I'll auto-key it while it's still invisible. Then on frame 9, edit object properties, and now I make it visible. So I bring the visibility up to 1 here. And it should remain visible through the whole time. But of course, I want it to fit again. And right when it blows up, I hit it at frame 9. Frame 10 is still there. Frame 11, I want it to fade again. So frame 12, I'm going to make it invisible. So, edit object properties. At frame 12, I make it invisible again. Hit the OK. And key. So it's going to be going from full strength, visibility-wise, and then start to fade to nothing. So way on down the line, there is no laser, but there should be a laser right around here when it hits the ship. And we can see it. I've actually got to get that a brighter color so you can see that there. But for right now, we have our keying made. Now the color of the laser, we want it to glow and look all nice. So let's play with the color of this when it's most visible on frame 9. Pick a material. So I'll pick a material here. I'll call it laser. And let's do a traditional nice red laser. So I'll pick something nice and red. All right, nice bright laser here. Self-illumination. Right now, let's take a look. And oh, I didn't even drag it over. OK, let's apply it. And very dull red. So we do a self-illumination. I can right-click, copy this and right click over here and paste it. So now I have this really bright red self-illuminating thing. It's a bit too fat, but I'll keep the fat for demo purposes here. So the laser hits it, but it doesn't quite look like a science fiction-y laser. It just looks like a bright line. To make it look science fiction-y, to make it look kind of nice that way, we're going to change some of the settings here. We'll go to Rendering, Effects, and we're going to add some effects. In this case, we're going to add a lens effect. Down here we have Glow, so I'll bring this over to one of the active effects. So we have Glow for our lens effect now. And we have to set this up specifically to work with our laser. So back in the Materials,
I'm going to set this up so that the object is using a certain material and that is applied right over here by material ID channel. Now choose a set material. I'll just do number nine. Let's do lucky number seven actually. So I'll do number seven here. So this material is material ID number seven. So the glow is just going to affect that. In options, I'll have it select the material ID and set that up to number seven. So it's just going to affect number seven. So for a quick run through, let's see what we get. And we have this glow affecting just material seven, which happens to be the laser. Now we can adjust it. So in the parameters here, I can play with this. And literally, that's what you do. You just kind of mix this up and see what you can come up with. So you play with the size of it and with the intensity of it. This is for the whole kind of thing. And this is just for that one particular item. So let's bring the intensity down and bring the size way down and see what we get now. OK. Kind of bright like that. Let's bring the whole thing size down. So we get much better. And the intensity down a bit too. All right, let's bring the size down even further. Much better. The intensity can drop also. Hmm. Well, you have to play with it to get it right. I'll bring the intensity up a bit. And the size down to one. There we go, you get the idea. So we have a glowing laser. Cylinder size is rather large right now. I can bring that down. So let's bring that cylinder radius down a bit. And here's what we normally do. So we have the laser hitting it. And if we want it to look more red, of course, we can bring this to more red. Let's bring that brighter. Maybe like so. Let's see what we get. All right, so we have a bit of a glow here. And the rest is just playing with the intensity and size of it. It's something like that. Ah, far too much. As you can see, it's kind of finicky, kind of touchy. So do whatever works. That's getting closer. Keep rendering. That's pretty darn good. All right. So eventually you get a good, nice laser effect. It's only going to last for a little bit. And then everything blows up. Make sure you get the right material ID number and things will be set. So the laser heat glows. The ship blows up. And you have a decent movie. If it flashes too quick, you can just spread these frames out. And the glow will last a little bit longer. So, have fun making lasers and blowing up chips.